Before I get into color cast, I wanted to talk about how our eyes deceive us. And I'm going to use the Munker White illusion for this. This particular image that I'm showing you now was created by David Novick. He's a professor at the University of Texas, and he creates all of these illusions based on the human perception of color. So if you're interested in that, just give him a quick Google. I'm going to make this image a bit smaller because the effect happens more dramatically the smaller their images. So I'm in Photoshop, so I'm just going to hit Command or Control minus to zoom out. So as you look at this, you're seeing four balls that are blue, four that are green, greenish yellow, and four that are real reddish orange or orangey red, right? I'll hit Command or Control zero to fit in screen. Now this is an optical illusion. I'm gonna turn off the layer that has the lines going across the front of the balls. Note how they're, the different color lines are going across different balls. And this is the illusion. All the balls are the exact same kind of flesh color with that three-dimensional uh, toning to make it look like a ball. But you put these colors across it, like if you put the blue wavelength, the, a blue line across the ball, the whole ball will look blue. If you put a green line across the ball, the whole, whole ball will look green. I'll zoom back out. See what I mean? So our, our eyes can't be trusted. So we just need to know that this phenomenon exists. So now let's talk about some real world examples. I'm going to start with this image and talk about color cast. Color cast is a tint of a particular color. It's typically unwanted and it evenly affects the entire photographic image or video in whole or part. Now, most digital cameras try to automatically detect this and compensate for a color cast. That's your auto white balance setting. And that truly will handle 85 to 90% of most average shooting. But if you are a dedicated shooter and you're only shooting outside in bright sunlight, set your white balance to bright sunlight. If you're shooting inside with strobe, set it to strobe, et cetera. So color cast correction is a process that fixes color issues and it makes the images and footage appear as naturalistic as possible. This is 100% different than color grading, which is more of a creative concern. The color grading process lets you add atmosphere and emotion to shots by coloring the footage in new and often unnatural ways. But that's not what we're doing. We're trying to just start from a, a natural, realistic perspective and then add our own vision to the image. So as you look at this, can you identify what is the color Cast. Problem is our eyes are going to auto white balance themselves to make us feel that this image is okay, that it doesn't have a color cast. So you have to really train your eyes as a photographer to look for it. Typically you can find it in the light, lighter tones, the light areas, the light gray areas. Kind of to prove my point, I'm gonna hold the space bar and just move this over. This is a big furry wing, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit M for the marquee tool and I'm going to make a big selection of that giant part, which should just be a white wing with some light gray stuff to define the wing patterns. I'm gonna command or control J to jump it to a new layer. I'm gonna come over and add a new layer while holding the command or control key. That way to add the new layer below the little color square I just created. And you can either go up to edit fill or you can hit shift F5. I'm on a Mac, so I'm just gonna hit shift delete. Any of those things will bring up this field dialog box. And I'm gonna choose contents, 50% gray, and choose okay. So now I'm going to zoom back into this by holding down the command and space bar, control and space bar for Windows people. We can pretty quickly see on this neutral gray background background that there's there is green there's, there's nothing but green there there's like green and light green right you can see that pretty clearly let me delete those now now that I've kind of shown you that so now I want to demonstrate the concept of how film photographers tackled color cast issues with film typically you would use a filter that was the color complement of the cast you wanted to remove so I'm going to emulate that here with digital I'm going to hit command or control J to duplicate my layer and then I'm going to go up to filter blur an average. And what this is going to do is it's going to take every single color and tone in this image and average it out, keeping the overall, you know, shift of where it is. It kind of will show you a color cast. So this is clearly green, right? So there's no question. We can actually pop open the info palette, hover over it, and look at those numbers. You're looking right here, RGB values. Remember, Photoshop measures the tonality of red, green, and blue from zero to 255. 256 total tones of red, green, and blue, because they count zero as a number. RGB values of 000 is pure black. RGB value of 255 all the way down is pure white. And RGB values of 128 all the way down is mid-neutral gray. 
So looking at these numbers, you can see that the green is 160. That's the highest number. So obviously it's the, the, sum, the numbers are telling us it's green, but we can visually see that it's green. So this is a technique you can use for some images very effectively. So now that I've averaged out the overall color, I'm gonna hit Command or Control I to perfectly invert it to its exact color complement and I'm gonna choose the blend mode of color. It's gonna be just outside of your viewing area, but it's almost at the very bottom of the layer blend modes area. Now, remember Photoshop starts everything at 100% volume. It would be like turning on your radio to a new station and your volume is wide open. They want you to see the full effect. You always, almost always have to lower the opacity until it sounds pleasing to your ears. That's 0%, 100%, and I'm just hovering over the word opacity. My cursor will turn into a scrubby slider, allowing me just to drag it. It's a lot quicker than opening this disclosure triangle and dragging back and forth that way. And I'm just gonna drag it until it feels pretty good. I'm gonna say it's around 44%. It's still not looking ideal, but it's looking better. Now that our eyes have coordinated to this particular uh, image, I'm gonna turn it off and you'll see how green it really was. Look at that, I mean, it's, it's horribly greenish yellow, right? Very easy to see. Now I wanna show you a better way. There's actually a good, better, best that I'll get into more detail in the following video but I just wanted to touch on it. So you can use this with levels or curves. You will see a gray point eyedropper there. Click on that gray point eyedropper and I'm just gonna click into that wing. Look at that, isn't that just so, Watch what happens when I turn that off. It's amazing how easily we can see the color cast in a comparative analysis because that looks just so much better. Let's customize the gray point eyedropper with this rose. Because what happens is any of these droppers, they're set, I'll click on one just to, let me get rid of that. I'll click on one just to start. Click on the gray point eyedropper. Notice in the, the tool option bar, the sample size is by default set to point sample. And that's a one pixel selection. When it says point sample, it means it's clicking on one specific pixel, which is never good because these images are huge. If I, if I hover right here, actually, let me go into the navigator panel. Remember anything you want to see, just go into window. All of these things are panels. Just put check marks beside the ones you want to have open and access to. So here I can just use this to zoom in. I can grab this navigator to choose the area I want to zoom into. I could also hit command plus a hundred times to zoom in very quickly. But I wanna show you what a pixel is. I know you know what a pixel is, right? So you all know these are pixels. If I were to click here to sample, my eye can't distinguish this. We couldn't see 100 by 100 square pixels averaged together because there are so many millions of them that make up this image. When your eyedroppers are set to point sample, it could be clicking on a JPEG artifact for that one pixel. It could be clicking on a part of a piece of dust. You don't know. So I always recommend changing that to three by three or five by five. Like three by three, that means if I click here on this, I mean, I'm, I'm just clicking somewhere beside that water drop. But if I click here, it means it's looking at the three pixels above see there's a darker one and two lighter ones it's these three pixels down and then so it's three rows of three then it averages all nine pixels i like the three by three or the five by five the five by five means it's going to look at 25 pixels around the center of where i choose so if i choose right here it's going to go two pixels above two pixels below it's basically five rows of five so 25 pixels are being averaged to give me the best possible solution so let's go back to the girl and just do that one more time. So again, I'm just going to add a levels and actually we can do curves as well. It's the same exact feature, same tools. The, the gray point tool sets the gray point in the image, which neutralizes color cast. That's a whole purpose to neutralize the color cast. And I'll just come over here somewhere, a little different spot, click inside there and just look at how it instantly removed it. You can see how it's altered the, the curves for each color channel to neutralize each individual color channel. So again, this is with it off, this is with it on. And when it's off, man, you can easily see what a problem it is. Now let me show you this in Adobe Camera Raw. So first you're gonna come up to the top Photoshop menu bar, click on filter, go down to the Camera Raw filter. Now remember, if you've used Camera Raw just immediately before this, the filter menu will always save the last filter you applied with all the settings in the very top line. Pretty much never use this unless you know that's what you want. Typically, you're always going to go down to that filter with the three dots. That's going to activate the interface or the dialog box where you can make the changes. So here's the camera raw interface. And for white balance, just inside the basic panel, toggle it open if it's not. And if it's not even on that, just hit these three lines up here for the edit menu and then 
toggle that open, go down to white balance and pan over to the right. Do you see this has the same gray point eyedropper? I can click where we clicked last time. I can click in here where it's more of a darker gray and that's it. It has perfectly neutralized the image super quickly. And again in here, because I have all these controls that remember the same controls here that are in Adobe Camera Raw, the processing engine, the algorithms are identical to the ones in the Lightroom develop module. Adobe has said it's basically the exact same engine in two different style of cars. So feel free to use these same techniques in Lightroom. Maybe I want to push up the clarity just a touch, the dehaze just a touch, and then open up my shadows. It just depends on the look that I'm going for. Maybe pull up the vibrance just a little bit. And I think I wouldn't mind a little blue, a little more blue around here. So how about I grab this masking button, click it, and then I'm going to come down and choose the brush, which is going to add a layer mask up here. Tap the right bracket key to make my brush bigger. And I'm going to paint just right back here, maybe down here a little bit over that green and then I'm just going to see if I can shift the color a bit. Notice how that overlay disappeared as soon as I started dragging the slider. Just to make it a bit more blue and I can drag this to try to match the blue of her eyes just a touch and then I can always brighten up the shadows if it goes a little too too crazy or pull up the exposure to make it just a little brighter. I can always lower the opacity of what I just did here dragging it to make your eyes bleed or dragging it to it doesn't apply at all. So I'm just going to drag it somewhere right in here just to give a little bit of a flavor of that. And then I would probably come back up to the edit menu, tapping on these three lines, scroll all the way down to the effects. And do I want a white vignette, which may actually fit with this particular image, or do I want it a bit darker? I'm gonna go darker, click okay. And there we go. Of course, I would wanna crop this. Let's say the client wanted to print it as an eight by 10, or that's the package I was selling. Here we go. Now I can quickly crop this to an eight by 10 ratio, keeping its full re resolution for printing. Now, as an aside, I feel like it's my responsibility that I've given you this great power of color correcting improper white balance. I have to also say, sometimes a color cast in an image is okay. This warm light from the candles and the tungsten bulbs really caters to this image. Like this dark, warm image is perfect for this scene. So obviously here in this situation, I, I wouldn't want to go up to levels and grab the gray point eyedropper and click on something that I think is neutral to remove that color cast. It can be kind of difficult in this scene. So if this is more towards a neutral color cast, which again, this was just so overly warm, it's it's almost impossible to get it perfectly neutral. This would have been a good situation to have a white balance card on site to shoot it if color accuracy was important for an ad campaign or something. But anyway, so I'm gonna click that off because I think this overly warm scene is perfectly appropriate, appropriate for this image. Now for this image, because it's food, obviously you wouldn't want a color cast just like you watched in that other video that was several years older than this 2023. But again, nothing has changed. You go up to levels, you choose that gray point eyedropper, you click where you think it should be gray, and look at my sample size. I haven't reset mine. I'm still at point sample. I'm gonna go to three by three. Then I'm gonna click right here. And it's a little extra warm. As I go to the darker gray, it will kind of come more neutral. So I just need to decide what looks most appetizing. I feel like this area is probably the most accurate to the scene that was actually shot. And remember your eye auto calibrates. So now let's go back. I bet you'll see that blue cast immediately. Do you see how it has kind of a bluish cast? And this particular food doesn't look good with the bluish cast. So here I think it looks a, a bit better, a bit warmer. Now look at this image. This was totally shot in the shade. You can, you can just see by the flat blue light that is illuminating this entire thing. You can kind of see it looks like it's in the shade of trees. But remember, anytime you're shooting in a shady area, chances are if it's shady, then that means there's sun somewhere. And then if the sun is outside of where you're shooting, like you're in the shooting in the shade of a building, the shade of trees, whatever, that basically means the light that's hitting the subject to illuminate it is a blue light. It's basically, the sky, the blue sky is reflecting and refracting the light and is passing on that kind of blue color cast. Typically auto white balance always fixes this, but if you're in a super deep shady area, go ahead and choose a, a shady white balance. 
or if it's a cloudy day, choose a cloudy white balance. But generally, it is true that the auto white balance is one of the best automatic features on cameras and will, again, take care of 90% of your shooting. But this is an extreme case. I'm gonna hit Command or Control minus, shrink it down just a little bit. I'm gonna grab that levels adjustment layer and you can tell this is a flat image also. Look at that, there's no, there's no pure white or, or light tones, which does happen a lot with you know underexposed or color cast images. So I'm gonna pull this over just to get that white more in here. And then I'm gonna grab this gray point eyedropper and maybe click somewhere where I think it should be gray kind of clicking on the lighter grays and the darker grays. Now here's what it's doing. If it has an extreme color cast in one direction, it's gonna push it to the extreme in the other direction. So obviously, I believe this is probably pretty close to what the original pumpkin looked like, but again, it's a little heavy handed, right? This is definitely too blue. This is definitely a little too orange. So if you ever get in that situation, just pull it down a little bit, like pull, pull down the opacity of, of, that, of that warmth just to make it not so saturated. So two blue, quickly color corrected. So now that we've done that, what can we do to make the image better? If I hit Command Option Shift Letter E, push everything to the top layer, hit Command J to duplicate it. Let's see what would happen if I went to my blend mode and added soft light just to make it a bit more dramatic. That's a little crazy. What about if I went up to screen? I like what that's doing on the pumpkin, although again, too dramatic. Actually, I think I'm gonna choose green. I'm gonna add a layer mask. Hit Command I to invert that layer mask. Look over at my foreground color, it's white, perfect. Hit B for the brush, perfect. Look up at my toolbar, make sure I'm on normal, and I'm at 80%, that's fine. So I'll right bracket key to make my brush about this big, and I'm gonna do one nice pass, just like that. So obviously that's a bit harsh, right? I can either Command Z, because I did that all in one pass, and I can just drag that opacity down to 40%. Like I just need 40% of that brighter screened area. Maybe another click right here. I'll Command Option Shift Letter E to push all that to its own layer, and I'll come back to these layers. Oops, I actually got the top one, so I'll Command click on that to deselect it. Now I'll hit Command or Control G to put everything I had selected into a group, turn off the group. Now here's where we were. And here's where we ended up, a nice shot. Now, if you're thinking, yeah, it's nice, but maybe it's a little too bright back here. Do you see how you can just keep going over and over and over again? So maybe now I would go over to the Dodge and Burn tool and I would choose the Burn tool. And remember the Burn tool is something you do to make specific areas darker. So mid-tones, 50%, it's pretty dramatic, but I'm gonna let it go. Hit right bracket key, because I just want to vignette the upper corner up here just a little bit, just to pull our attention down here to the pumpkin. And I didn't use a layer mask, so now I've got to go back to Dodge and see if I can make that just a little, a little brighter right here. There we go. I hope this has helped. Hey, if you like this video, it helped. You can help me. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack it. Take care. I like subscribers. That's awesome. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> God. Oh my God, I did. This is Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here. <laughs>